Welcome back to the channel, guys. Chiefs here. I know it's been a little bit, it's been like a month I've been guiding. You guys are gonna be joining me here on a crazy video, extreme salmon fishing. And right now I'm about to get cleated up because we are going to be crossing an extremely fast, dangerous river in hopes of locking down a nice little hole that we can float fish, skein, and throw some thunder sticks in to chase some late king salmon here in Northern Michigan. So gotta get cleated up, getting everything packed up right now. And we are about to cross some treacherous rapids. It's gonna be an interesting one, guys. Stick around. All right, I know it looks stupid, but I'm putting these studs in my boots right now, and all I got is a pair of freaking pliers. So just driving these in, and you guys will uh, see shortly here why. Use a drill or something. It's working, but use a drill, for God's sake. As you can see, I've done it plenty in the past, and uh, wear it out, that's for sure. That'll help a little bit. All right, so as you guys can see behind me, we got a good, man, I don't know, probably quarter mile between me and this hole that I'm trying to get to. This water is definitely higher than what it was when I was here last night. All right. Oh, God. Yeah, she's slippery. She is slippery, all right. Just going to take our time through this right here. Oh yeah, she's sliding. Oh, I'm sliding. I'm sliding, guys. I am sliding. These cleats are not doing anything, I swear to God. I'm about knee deep right now. Maybe a little more. Oh yeah, that's about knee deep right there. Uh-huh. All right, gotta push, we're committed. Just gotta watch my step. There's some rebar out here that'll like poke your waders. There's a lot of big cracks, but Gotta get past this part. Damn, she is ripping, dude. Oh my goodness. And there is no stop in me if I go down. Besides a lot of big boulders and iron rebar. Like right here, big drop off. You can you can literally see it. I am over my over my knees. Damn! I gotta get back up to whatever the heck I was just standing on. Okay, that's a lot shallower. There is a hole right here. Do not step that way. Noted. Oh yeah, there's a big chunk of rebar right on the ground. Rebar or a crack? Oh, that's just a big crack. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so right here, I don't know if you guys can see this. There's about a foot and a half, two foot crack. If you stepped in that, that is not good. Still this slick, flat rock. All this is bedrock. It's just flat. Yeah. All right, I want to say that we just got through the worst half. That current is ripping. Big cracks that you got to watch out for. You're one ankle twist away, like right there. I mean, that's, that's a foot different. Oh, we're in a hole, okay. All right, we are fully committed at this point. Current's kind of slacking a little bit. This feels better. I feel like I'm getting there. Whoa, king, <laughs> there's a king right there. All right, I think we made it, guys. Quick little rundown on the rig that we're running. We've got the nice hand-tied Mags Custom Rod individually made here locally owned in the upper peninsula of michigan he makes phenomenal rods ice fishing float fishing bass rods pike rods you name it we have a nice 11 foot fast action rod here it's rated 10 to 17 pounds shimano vanford reel it's a size 3000 reel spooled up with 40 pounds we got it tied up to about a 10 foot bumper leader here of monofilament this is 20 pound maxima here that we have a 14 gram float attached to this is another custom float, Brian Lee Smith, Silver Wolf custom float. Awesome floats. I'll put links to all these guys in the description below. But 14 gram float, size seven water gremlin split shot, and about five feet later, we're gonna be running a bulk shot setup. And at the bottom end of our rig, we're gonna have an egg loop knot attached to this two odd octopus hook made by Gamagatsu, tied to about a 16 to 18 inch fluorocarbon leader of 16 pound test. Potsky fire cured salmon row. These came off of a king salmon, I think last week on one of my guided fishing trips. 
and uh, we got some fire cure in there mixed with a little bit of borax of fire to stiffen them up. So like I said, these come in skeins. So this is a big chunk of cured salmon skein right here. And all I'm gonna do, is I'm just gonna probably take this little end piece. I like kind of working it down the skein. You don't wanna cut chunks out of the middle. Just kind of work your way down the skein. So hopefully this bait doesn't fall, but there we go. Right there, we got that nice little golf ball size shape. This is what we call an egg loop knot that essentially has a holster for your bait to sit in. As you guys can see right here, some people like to hook their skein and then wrap the egg loop knot through it. I haven't really seen a big difference, but this is gonna be the end product. And now the last step is you just have to throw it in the hole. So just made it to this spot, I actually see a guy hooked up right in front of me. So hopefully we can do the same and get on a couple nice fish while this morning bite's still alive. There we go. Nice fish. First of the morning here on Skane. It's been a little tougher bite, but we got a nice female muncher there. We're gonna let her go. I'm not really here to keep fish right now, so just trying to pull on a couple. Beautiful fish, nice clean fish. Cool. Let's do it again. Yeah, I thought about keeping her for eggs, but I don't know. I hate the whole concept of just keeping fish for eggs. It just seems weird. There's plenty of other people that keep their fish that throw them out that I can usually get them from, so maybe I'll kick myself in the future for it, but whatever. I don't care. I got enough bait to last me till now. If I run out of bait, maybe it'll be different. Oh my God, it's big. <laughs> Guys, this is a tank. This is a tank. Oh my. Guys, this fish is huge. This fish is huge. This fish is huge. This fish is huge. Taking my time. Yeah, that thing was pinned. That fish was not going anywhere. This 
sometimes you just got to admire them, guys. And this is one of those fish. Very solid Lake Michigan King Salmon right here. Early October. Doesn't get better than that, man. Nice female. We're going to let her go. We don't need any eggs or anything, but phenomenal fish. how I tie my egg loop snell knot. I like running 16 pound sniper. Sometimes I'll upgrade to 20 pound if the kings are a little bigger. I like to take a strand. It's probably about 20 inches to start when I trim. We're just gonna be running one knot Gamagatsu octopus hook here. It's a good bait hook. So what I do is I run my tag in through the front of the eyelet right here, like so. So now, We've got a little tag right there. And I do a counterclockwise wrap eight times. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now essentially you could tie it off and it's a snell knot right here. But what we do is we're gonna pinch all these wraps off and kind of keep a pinch on that tag end right there. And we're gonna pinch it with our left hand. We're gonna take the opposite end of our leader here. Our, our long tag and we're gonna go through the back side of this hook. So now, run it through. I only let it hang out about an inch and a half, two inches. And this is the part that'll kind of trick people, but we're gonna take it all, we're gonna clump it all. So now we have this loop right here, which is essentially gonna be our egg loop. So I pinch it all off right here. I grab it again, but this is the most important part is I'm gonna grab the piece of line that I have my loops with. So this is, we're gonna get, continue our loops right here. We still have our long, our long tag hanging out the front. And we're gonna continue these wraps and we're gonna go back over another six to eight times. The wraps are really your own preference. I do eight and eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I'm gonna pinch it all off. So now we have eight wraps. We ran the line through. Eight more wraps over the top of this line. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna pull on our tag end right here and you just pull this through. Just keeping it pinched and pull it through. And there you have it. You got a nice uniform knot right here and this is essentially gonna be a holster for your bait because every single time you poke your leader through, it, it's gonna create a nice loop for your bait right there. So that's how I do my egg loop knot. There's really two methods you can hook your bait onto this hook. Some people like to hook it directly and then run it through their egg loop. So some people like to do this just as an extra step. So you hook it and then you take your egg loop and then go underneath it and cinch it down with your long tag end. So some people like this method because what it does is it essentially keeps your hook in a vertical position or some people skip the whole hooking part of it and they'll just run it right through the egg loop. But that's how I do it. I get a lot of questions on it and I figured I'd break it down in this video for you guys. feel very big, I don't know. Perfect. Okay. 